Hey, Randall. Hey, Julian. How are things up there? They're going really well. Uh, Good. A friend of mine who, uh, who uh, worked for me in New Zealand and was at Autodesk on Maya for many years and then at uh, Unity has uh, now joined Apple. So I'm really excited to have him on board and, um, and to, to get to show him some of the things I've learned in the last eight years. And so it's really fun. That's cool. That's great. Morning. Good morning. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy. How's everybody? Oh, surviving. <laughs> it's the season of the sniffles. You know, that's what oh, you no. Get. That's what you get for working in elementary school. You know? Oh, no. Uh, the, the kids are just the constantly sick. Brenda, you have kids, right? Yeah, I've got a nearly ten-year-old. Uh, so it, there, there are waves, and uh, and they end. But yeah, we also like we we moved with her at nearly two, and uh, so that that meant not only did we get all of the small child things, but we've got all of the North American small child things, as opposed <laughs> to all of the New Zealand ones. And it it was a lot in the first six months. I just feel like I have a friend here who has three kids under five and they're just, every time we try to make dinner plans, they're constantly sick. And they've now done this yeah. thing where they're just like, they started to normalize asking me if I'm cool with getting sick, if I want to hang out. Like, they're like oh, Do you, no. are you cool with getting sick? And I'm like, no, no. I don't, I don't want to get sick to hang out. No, no, it's not worth it. It's totally not no. worth it. Like it's, I mean, it's actually, are, it's, it's kind of great that they ask because some parents wouldn't even, yeah. wouldn't even, they'd just be like, you know, I want, you know, in some kind of like, um, not undermining way, but lurking deep. It's like, I want you to share some of this load so that I can talk oh, totally. to you about like how, you know, how much, how stressful it is to have a kid and, or whatever, whatever they're doing, yeah. I, you know, I'm doing, I'm psychoanalyzing the people who don't say anything. You're uh, spot on though. Because yeah. she was the only reason she asked is because she's secretly a total introvert and she doesn't want to hang out with people. But she's like, we have friends who don't tell people that their kids have been sick and that they've been sick because otherwise they would never see people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're just like, which is kind of undermining, right? Like that's sneaky, I think. Yeah, it all comes to bear eventually. May as well be honest. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here though. I'm here and I'm I'm down to hang. So thank goodness nice. for you. Nice. Love that. I'll give it a minute or two to see if anyone else wants to chime in. I know it's nice early Wednesday. Is um, Ben Lucas up in SF as well? Does anyone know? I don't know Ben Lucas. I haven't heard that name yet. Oh, uh, Ben? No, he, Benjamin. He the the fellow Benjamin with the with the um yeah with the what's it called um equi rectangular webcam on Friday. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I believe he's in SF. It looked like it when I was stalking his LinkedIn. Okay, I thought his name was Ben Lucas. On the I might have messaged the wrong person. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I suspect it would be. Uh, he was yeah, his screen name was Benjamin on the on the yeah. Zoom. 
Yes. Man, I got so much stuff rolling here. I got to, um, I just got the, I just got these, uh, a dozen cap blanks in that I want to, I want to try some, uh, embroidering ideas. Not, I mean, you know, just basically merch stuff. And I was a little bit bummed because I was like, man, this doesn't look like black. People say black and it's like a, it's like a, it's like a really dark gray. And I'm, I'm part of me is like, uh, should I just try it or should I send them back or should I just get another dozen of a different finish in black? I mean, it's all an experiment, right? You get the thing and someone says, it right. looks like pink to me. Well, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. It's like, that's lavender, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. There's certain colors that are just the worst to try to get printed. Um, you, yeah. Did you have it done through a vendor that you know, or the first time? uh to to actually get the cap yeah uh it's a um it's the first it's the first time with this particular wholesaler but the cap itself i have i've gotten from other places you know in in other points in history and it might and actually the 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 two caps are the same manufacturer but um Mm. definitely different uh the material is different you know so i don't know if that's just them like well, this is the black that we got, you know, an entire container ship of, and so we're calling it black. Or if it's actually a different finish of a fabric that causes it to roll light in a different way. You know what I mean? Yep. Like when you just look at it, you're kind of like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, but you never, I mean, it's definitely, it's, it feels, the, the material uh, looks and feels more premium than the cap that I just bought where I had no control over. I, and I just looked at the labels like, okay, these guys. Yep, and I found the I found these guys on on you know my new wholesaler. I don't know, you know, I'm just, I'm not too bothered by it. Except I did wake yeah. up in the morning being like, I don't know, I gotta that's 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 bugging me a little bit. <laughs> Dude, that was one of my heart like biggest heartbreak moments when I spent over a year prototyping this like down to like the the smallest details, and then when somebody when an investor looked at it, he was like, I don't really care about the prototype because we'll just, when we go to production, we're just going to change all of this anyway. Yeah. When we, the manufacturer or whatever, we just want to know the business plan. And they were like, business plan works great. And I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Cause like I had, I care so much about like the silicone was like this matted powder coated silicone that was the, was the tag. And I loved the way it felt. And they're like, oh, we may not even use a tag. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one of those situations. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Julian, do you know if Dre is going to join today? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I would say he's probably, I don't know. He's, he's, um, he's, uh, he, he's connected and stuff, but he's he's also like up north. He said, "I don't know what that means when you're in Canada." So I think he's kind of uh, <laughs> he's 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 out of pocket in a way. Yeah, that feels incredibly further specific north to Canada. Yeah, yeah, up north could be like Arctic Circle. Exactly. Um, well, we'll get started because I know you have to jump pretty pretty soon, right? Uh, actually, I just deleted that call because I realized it wasn't a pressing. It was uh, just with a vendor I'm talking to about doing uh, distribution nice. or something or shipping labels. I can't remember. But I was like, eh, I'll just reschedule. Cool. Um, so the presentation I put together today was more just an update because I thought we might have like Ben on the call. And I wanted to make sure that someone like Ben was caught up did on you, everything. Did you ping him, by the way, like in the Discord? Yeah, I wrote... Okay. Um, a direct like a dm yeah that i included no i i did i wrote him a direct message for some reason i can only direct message or group message people that i'm friends with yeah i think that's that's the thing with i think that's across the board Discord? So, yeah so you're not okay. like spamming people even though i do get spam from people somehow they cool. their work around yeah i did reach out to him individually though um okay. but aaron i chime in here i don't know how much you know about the chore in sort of how it came to be. I think 
I, you've seen some presentations in office hours, correct? Yeah, I don't know if I know like prehistory necessarily. Um, okay. I mean, I, you know, I know what the archetype of a chore code is and I definitely like, we, I've, I've been present for the sort of discussion of doing some AR stuff. Um, nice. Sent some suggestions around like somebody who might be able to offer some help with filters and things like that. Um, Perfect. And then I'm happy to like yes. come in on, you know, other sort of hardware type feature things that might be helpful. Great, then I won't waste our time today with just, you know, like recounting from history to present, but um, I will share my screen real quick um, and go through some just imagery real quick so that we're all on the same page. We've all, you know, Brendel and I've had some some conversation. Julie and I have had conversation. Aaron and I just spoke yesterday, actually. Uh, we did not talk about the, the digital, but we just got a chance to catch up. So um, I feel like we're in a good place to... Julian, do you mind uh, giving me access? Uh, share screen. There you go. Perfect. So really today's call is to... I think the goal is to to finalize a a course of action um, with what platform we want to use. Um, I've been brushing up on AR filters and whatnot. Um, I'm going to just blow through all this real quick because this is we've all seen this. Um, this again was just for mostly for Ben. Um, this idea of focusing on world building. This is the Miro board. Um, this accessory snapshot, right? So like looking at how we can get the accessories to filter on top of this chore code of ours. So these are just obviously two renderings that I did. These went on to the call for action to get people to add accessories to the board, to the Miro board. Mm -hmm. um, this was before we really even started diving into things. And then I had some really great calls. You know, Brendel and I really talked about this idea of emojis and taking up digital space um, and how we can really take up physical space in digital, how digital entities can kind of take up physical space. Um, and I think our first entry point after our last group, our first digital call, which was maybe two or three weeks ago, um, we landed on this AR filter entry point um, solely for the, the reason really to use our, our phones. Um, in, the, in the, the lowest sort of common denominator for people to, to enter into this, this digital space. Um, so I'm putting, I just, you've seen this image before, this is Carling's t-shirt. This was back in 2019, really accessible, I think for us to create. Um, I've been doing a lot of tutorials on different platforms for both creating digital garment and, um, an AR filter. And I was hoping Camille might join today, but really now I wanna find out what, does anyone have a preference on what AR platform we would wanna use? Um, and if anybody is willing to walk me through how to create that kind of uh, coat, not a coat, but just create the filter that I would need to do to do this. So I'm going to open that up now for discussion. The closest thing I have to offer is somebody who would know better than me. Um, okay. I have no particular preference. I would just say, you know, one that's going to be usable by people easily, right? The fewer things they have to yep. download, the better. but that's, that's really all I have on that front. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. I, uh, obviously AR is pretty good at a bunch of stuff, but if you're building something that's just sort of AR kit, then that may mean that it's an application on its own. Whereas if you're using Snapchat or I guess Instagram has AR filters, um, yep. then that means that they are they're they are a, they're still a download in the sense that somebody's got to tap something to get it. But there there's a whole company with a incentivized for the sort of the discovery process that means that you can sort of. Uh, learn those things there. 
my understanding of the way that Snapchat, so, so, so to that end, I would say like Snapchat, my understanding of what you would put into a Snapchat filter is such that it would probably be moderately portable uh, in terms of what you would understand and know about it. Um, the barrier to entry for Snapchat filters is likely to be lower than doing a raw AR kit thing. Um, Eighth Wall, the company that Ni uh, that Niantic purchased recently, is able to do this straight up over the web. There are some benefits there insofar as um, nobody even needs to be in Snapchat. They can just look at a URL and, and pick it up, but the performance isn't going to be likely to be quite there. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, how do we feel? I mean, so I was just, the tutorial I was watching last night was, I think, the head of uh i forget what their department was but it was through snap and they were basically walking you step by step through creating a, an ar filter through snap um uh -huh. so and they've, they've got it all posted i mean they, they want you to do it right um yeah so and it makes sense i mean they're trying to get everybody onboarded um and i have a good contact at snap whose job is partnerships there solely in fashion so there's potentially a uh, lucrative is not the right word, a like smart choice for us if we want to go that route. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, want... I, I, just looking up a, a good friend of mine from from X Apple is the head of AR developer partnerships as well. So you know, pick on at, at Snap. <laughs> Alex. Yeah, well. I. I stopped using Snap so long ago and I just sort of assumed because I stopped using them, everyone did, right? That sort of like only child <laughs> concept. <laughs> um, and I, I had no idea just the amount of, I, I, I mean, I figured this out years, a couple of years ago, but just the, the power they've been putting into their filters and AR um, and their goal with fashion in general. So it might be the right way to go, especially if we're looking at a younger demographic to onboard pretty quickly into it. Um, Cause I see this as being something that's pretty playful, right? Like these accessories are not something like, I want this to be an interactive playfulness. Um, the code I could be seeing, you know, the code's gonna have a higher price point, right? So if the code is a couple hundred dollars, that's something that maybe somebody who's entrenched in a career would wanna buy. If the accessory is like $30, that could be something that maybe a Gen Z person would want to buy more easily. I, I'm thinking, I'm sporadically thinking here, but I'm, I'm thinking that client may be more snap related is, is another way of thought here. This is totally anecdotal, but um, when I was in Tucson at the job site for Dimensional Energy, which is totally somewhere where we could do like chore coats if they were fire retardant, um, the person, one of the operators was on Snapchat. So just like, you know, somebody random who's an engineer who works at a job site uses that social media. I think that's a great, yeah. easy. I also just really like that they're facilitating it. Like I, I was pleasantly surprised that they're, they put this entire 30 minute tutorial up. I mean, it's dry as can be, but it is, it walks you through step by step. And is that is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to basically just you want to you want to get a feel for what AR experience might be like in this context. Is that what? Yeah, you're I really. Yeah, I'd like to get. I'd like to do this in tandem. So you know, the reason I reached out about the project management tools now that I'm building sort of a Gantt chart of both physical and digital, I'd like to release the physical coat with the digital accessories at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and so. The physical, I mean, I can produce a physical garment. I, I don't know how to create an AR filter with the fidelity that I would want it at. So that's sort of why I'm trying to, if there's a, if there's a platform like Snap that's inherently doing the heavy lifting, I feel like there's something intelligent about using that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't answer your question though. What was what are you thinking i'm just i'm just trying to get a, get a sense of well i mean i think you answered it it's like so it sounds like you're looking for someone like to you want to prototype the ar thing yeah yeah and so we need to find just a way in which you can do that 
you know, just some someone who knows I do it, and you can be like, hey, look, can we just get, you know, I'm gonna put like, I don't, you know, I'm gonna, I'm not even sure how exactly how it works nowadays. To be honest, it's like, are there? Is it all markerless? I'm assuming it's all markerless by now. Is it? It's feature. Yeah, it just looks for features. Yeah, uh, uh, th there are a range of different things that stuff can look for. So faces are pretty good. Um, you can use markers, fiducials. Uh, I think you can upload specific ones. Yeah. Um, the the quality of the marker in terms of its identifiability uh, would change what you can do. You know, so something that I've been thinking about is those flexible e-ink e displays and the possibility of actually putting QR codes uh, on parts of the body that have the ability to change. But yeah, you, you can you can definitely attach things to faces in a in a straight up filter. Uh, yeah. I don't something I don't like know about hands. Something yeah. that came up through both a call with Brandel and in conversation with you, Julian, is with that to the conversation about markers, the rail system kind of this rail system slash piping system that we may be integrating into the physical coat could help create the structure of mm -hmm. like a, a foundation for uh, of um, when I say foundation framework rather for for accessories, right? Like it could create some sort of like embedded uh easier qr coding ish from what i've been researching like just giving it a blank chore code may be a little bit it may be a little bit not enough information but if we give it some rails and some like framework it could help like popping out contrast in brandle to correct me if i'm wrong here but that seems like from what i've been researching could help give identity to it right yeah um, anything anything kind of structured uh, that has direction uh, and is able to kind of uniquely identify where on something something is so like uh yeah, yeah like the, the with the apple park visitor experience there was this johnny i've made this beautiful aluminum sculpture of apple park but um the first iteration of it um, he wanted it to be featureless aluminum and that means that you weren't able to really tell one square inch from another. Um, and so they put a unique grid over it uh, that was hopefully tasteful enough, but it meant that you can tell this is this square inch, this is that square inch. And so any kind totally. of uniquely identifying features and, uh, and and indicators of direction and stuff like that um, is, is warmly accepted by the algorithm. Yeah, so there's sort of a little bit of a method to that madness with the rails. I mean, it sort of was, a, it was definitely a happy accident. I can't take, can't say that I had planned that, but it, it definitely works out in our favor. Um, and so, yeah, definitely just start prototyping the AR stuff. I'm going to reach out to Camille and see, because I think she's prototyping in AR from what I gathered. Does anyone know that to be true? I'm not sure what she's doing. She, 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 was, she was weaving or knitting uh, QR codes and she was uh, one of her team members is a, somebody in the, uh, the AR house. So those okay. signs point to that. Okay, so I'll reach out to her. And then if not, her, the director of her program is uh, lives down the street from me and we go hiking a bunch. Uh, he's the director of the media practices program at Art Center now. So he'll definitely know somebody he can put us in touch with. So this, is, is this, is this, um... This shouldn't, it, it, it sounds more complicated than maybe I, I feel like it should be just in terms of uh, like, there have to be like a zillion people messing around with it. Right. I'm just, just trying to understand. I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. like, you know, can't get your shit together by, at, at all. I'm yeah. just saying like, this, this seems like a, this is like routine in some sense, routine in, in terms of make... like, like if people want like, Hey, AR, we want everyone playing around with it. Here's a little, um, a little demo of how you can, of how you can try it out. Or is, or am I totally mistaken? Like, like snaps, like whatever they call it, AR kit. Like someone, I was talking about some, someone snapped like a couple of years ago. They're like, yeah, just download AR kit and, you know, and then, and then get going. I'm not saying that that's what you should do, Kemp. I'm just trying to understand yeah. um, what, what the, what the tool chain is nowadays for at home AR mucking about and, and, you know, I've got a Saturday afternoon, I'm gonna play around with this kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know 
I don't know that world. So if that's something that if it is that accessible and, and easy to get into. I guess I'm um, sort of asking Brandel. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. There. Okay. Um, so I haven't played with any of those technologies okay. myself. Uh, I've, 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 I've attended sundry sort of events where people have gone through, like you say, uh, camp, the, the super dry um, introduction and, and uh, sort of tutorial stuff. Uh, and from what I've, see it looks like it should be pretty straightforward there are a number of people who are less technically adept than um well the people i work with who have been able to create things and so uh it, it seems like it should be relatively straightforward but uh yeah like it's um yeah so if, if anybody has sort of an interest in it then they, they should be able to pick it up um I, I i haven't done that myself yet got it i just added yeah. uh a link to the to the chat something brandall turned me on to this sony uh mocapi motion tracking thing it's like these bracelets headband waistband type deal um this is the, it seems like it has a pretty straightforward platform like this stuff outputs data to make you know like an avatar that dances that you like basically you can you can output the motion tracking tracking data and like somehow use it with you know existing avatar platforms or something like that maybe useful there um but, but then, I mean, I don't know if, if you need to sort of like visual references, like just some kind of like high contrast stitching or some buttons might give you, you know, just enough for it to latch onto. You could do like some near future, you know, buttons or I don't know, if you did a white chore coat, you could do red stitching or something like that. Yeah. Julian, um, is your worry that we're we're making it overly complicated? No, I don't think so. Uh, I I still don't. It's, I'm, 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 I I feel like having a someone needs to mess around with it in order to you know, kind of give us a, a richer understanding of what this of what this might be. And I and I think that person is you, Kemp, because I think you have like yeah. a very kind of direct. You're you're dreaming something, and maybe and you're probably seeing maybe a lot of stuff uh, more specifically in um, you know in in the world of fashion, like the you know that that people are playing around with this. And so I'm trying to figure out the way to, um, you know, get like, get you the, get you the, the, the tools, the resources, the person or whatever, who can say, okay, let me just, let me, let's, let's, uh, let me walk you through, or let me, let's walk through together how we can start prototyping this, this experience. Yeah. I see what you're kind of talking about, but I feel like so much more is going to be learned if 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 you start if you start doing things creating things that you can see and feel and you know understand like the constraints and limitations and possibilities um more than you can do by doing uh you know collages in in illustrator or, or figma or whatever you know whatever you know when you said like this um right and so i'm just trying to think of what the way is to do that and my my first maybe you know just naive assumption and, and potentially wrong is that there are there are toolkits to to do that. When I when I kind of Google it, it's like it seems just from the Google results, it seems like that there are, but they also say like developer toolkit kind of thing, right. which is not like hey, here's a way to, um, you know, without without having to have like a CS degree or like whatever, no no uh, you know, Python or something. I don't know what the, whatever they're using to to begin to play with it yeah so um you know I, I might suggest again like naively and i'm not i don't know if this would what will come back is to um i mean like I, I know one guy but i think he would just be like a heavy lift to work with so i'm not even going to suggest him he used to be at snap and uh and got laid off and um he was one of my grad students you know whatever 10 years ago um so that's like a, that's like a back 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 backup kind of thing, but maybe just like like asking in the Discord, like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Like, are, you know, what what's the what's the what's the simplest tool chain to begin playing around with, like with with AR, um, with AR. Well, I think that's yeah, and that's sort of what this call today is. I think I think what I'll do. It feels like Camille has even through her grad program, maybe some people who are, maybe this is naive to say, but like would people at that 
are people at Art Center interest, you know, since she even had somebody who was interested in being part of doing work through NFL. Although I, that sounded more like a collab thing. Um, but there's got to be somebody there who wouldn't mind sitting down with me and just like walking me through how to do this. That, that's you know? that's that's that might be a big ass. He's saying like there must there, there might not be. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's like, what I I, I think got my, that I got, I got like, a thesis project. I got I'm just saying you know right, like who wouldn't want to sit down and like walk through this with me for six hours? Yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> um, but I but I would I would just I would just you know I would just uh, you know um, emphatically ping um, uh, Camille so she might she might be she might like you said I just haven't I just haven't tried I've just I haven't tracked what she's actually working on at this particular moment. Um, yeah. So, you know, more emphatically track her and, and just be very specific, say, I want to get something set up so that I can, so that I can, you know, have my phone, I guess, and, 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 uh, and see, and, and see how I can uh, do, do AR on, on, uh, on clothing, you know, if, yep. if that's the yes. answer, like just be very hyper-specific um what do i need to do that and that might even be like a even even if and then you know even if you can find like a video of someone doing it and saying like this this is what i want to be able to do yeah just to just to test some concepts um and i'm 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 assuming i'm sort of believing based on what you've shared that like people are doing this like I, i'm not sure if it's you know I'm, by that by that i mean like hey it's not uh it's it actually works technically um yes. and and this is what they're doing for the part that the part and this is more just kind of like concept uh kind of reflection the part that i'm not quite getting at this point is is the is the what and why like i think technically it's possible and the part that i'm not saying that i'm not getting it like this is the silliest idea ever i'm not i'm not feeling it enough to be like okay this is i get this i get why this is happening in the future why and, the... and why why ar things are happening on fashion in the future so... I, I i don't i don't yet see that world and i'm not i'm not necessarily looking for an answer i like i'm enjoying not knowing yeah um and and and, and so that's it and so i i'm i'm curious for this to go to the next level because i don't think that answer is going to come with words i think it's going to come with like oh okay i see I see what you're. Yeah. I see what you're seeing. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious to sort of like, what is the AR component of a of a garment that is, you know, sort of historically very utilitarian? Like, does the AR augment that utility? Does it? Is it something altogether separate? Right. Like, is it is it useful for expression or is it a tool in some way? I would love to know, like, you know, two to three specific instances, right, of like how the AR is used and, you know, what's an industrial application, what's a fashion application, what's like, a, I don't know, like so, a small social application with friends. Yeah, yeah. Like kind of thing. Like what, what, why am I, so I could see doing this on the runway because it's like high concept, you know, kind of stuff like, Ooh, okay, cool. Like, Oh, I yeah. just changed that, that, that sweatshirt from blue to red. Like, uh, you know, like, Oh, wow. And, and, and it's so high concept. But if I'm, if I'm sitting at a bar after a shift at the coal mine, you know, what, what am I, what am I doing? If I'm, if I'm uh, right. trying to decide, um, you know, what, which, which, which instance, you know, yeah. Like what, where, where does it tie into yeah, all the I guess the chore cuts of just I'm sort of echoing Aaron because it made me, you know, I would get to that point of like uh the the mundane question around it. Yeah. So I and I can chime in a little bit with it now because the idea of the physical chore coat being rooted in sort of the now going into the near future and coming back, right? And then people wanting to well, not people, but creating these accessories to give everyone their individual identity of what the near future was. And then this idea of doing that digitally then evolved with these AR filters, the way that I see it, it sort of evolved on its own. The utilitarian element, I think, has, be, has come into, well, one aspect of sort of 
community building in the sense that like, so say you're at that bar, you've come back from the near future and someone else is in your chore code, you can actually use your phone to see if they're just wearing their regular chore code or if they're actually part of your, as we've been using this futures dumpster diver community, right? So if they're wearing that chore code and you have your AR, you have your phone, you can see if they have their little accessories on them as well, right? And so they're, you can see if this person that you don't even know. And my idea is that this community, as we've grown from like, you know, 10 or 12 people grows into hundreds and hundreds of people. If you're in a bar in say Europe, you know, Paris or London or, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, and you've got your chore coat on and you've got your phone with you. And then you happen to be like, oh, is this guy wearing this chore coat because he's just a fan of the chore coat or is he wearing an actual chore coat that he's gone to the near future with. And if I use my filter, I can see what he's gone to the future and used or brought back or done something with. And then I can go over, have a conversation with him about what his concept of the future is or what he's done in the near future. And then there's all of a sudden, it's like this person you don't know has become part of your community and you're talking about what that is. Hmm. So that's sort of how I've been seeing these accessories giving people individual identity within the community of near future labs, and then also sort of promoting their, ver their visions. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have maybe something to add that we're like a similar experience of something like this, but, but, but where it goes horribly um, or just, just maybe it doesn't, doesn't have its intended effect. You, you know, when you go to like the Harley Davidson store and you can like buy the Harley Davidson aesthetic, and like pair, paired with that are all like the little stickers with like the, the sort of cheeky phrases on them. And they seem like, you know, hyper individualist sort of like, oh, I don't need no man or whatever. And like, and there's some, there's some kind of just weird stuff, but it's like, it's a sticker pack that you buy at the Harley Davidson store. So it sort of like undercuts itself, you know what I mean? Because it seems like it's separating you from the group, but it's actually just sort of like this in crowd individualism. Um, so if that's an example of this going poorly, like what I just sort of, you know, what's an example of it going well, right? Where it's not just some sort of like off the shelf identity kit. Yeah. Yeah, I see it more as like, a, you know, yeah. I think this is where I think it it, it needs it, you know just it, it needs uh would need to continue um and in order to you know kind of feel like this is something that we kind of pulled but we 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 dug up from the future. Yeah. In my mind it's, it's it still feels a little bit it still feels a little, I hear the story it still feels a little bit like um there's it had, I haven't quite connected to it. And that, that, that's just, yeah. that's just me. Like I'm, you're feeling something totally. Cause I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're kind of doggedly going after this, which is amazing. And so I think I, it's just a suggestion. My, my suggestion is like the next thing is like, you got to start building that, you know, you got to start programming yeah. it. like we did with the, what we did with the jacket, which, which took it, which kind of launched it. I mean, for me, cause I was kind of like, all right, this, this feels like we're, we're on a path. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the, I feel, yeah, I definitely feel like the accessory, I feel like we're in this weird zone right now where neither are fully figured out, but they're, I mean, it has to go through that, that has, it has to go through that sort of in, ambiguous phase. Um, I think the digital stuff, part of what I'm curious to see is what people are going to do with it, but I don't necessarily, the why for me with the digital stuff was always really rooted in giving people access to having individual identity within NFL because everyone's idea of the future was different. If it's something that has to come from the future, then I think inherently maybe that we have to design something that is then I, I'll, I'll think about that concept a little bit more because I think these accessories may need to be pushed a little bit because maybe the accessories themselves are what is coming from the near future.
You know, like what are the um, accessories in the future that aren't a phone? Yeah. Well, so something that I've uh, often lamented is the, the fact that the, the modality of the computer doesn't change much when I'm engaged in one task versus another. And, you know, it might actually be nice for me to actually have a, a physical object that I put on my desk when what I'm doing with my computer is Photoshop. Um, that that the, the different sort of things that you're thinking about can, uh, can be uh, sort of planted right in the middle of your attention uh, as reminders of what it is that you're attending to. Hmm. So, um, so having certain values or certain uh, thoughts at a, at a certain time yeah. can be kind of rendered uh, explicitly. Uh, the other thing that, yeah, I mean, so the other thing that you can aim to do is, is really have functionality attached to them. So, you know, one of the things that we were talking about within the context of the digital is that if you have uh, objects, be they digital or tangible, that uh, relate um, interaction with the built environment. So that's not simply something like a snap filter, but like if you had, say, um, a thing on as the like if people play games like a uh, video games like League of Legends or, or or other things like that where you have um different auras and areas of effect that come on over your characters so that mm -hmm. um that people heal around you or whatever and if you had um if you had an object be it like digital or physical that made all of the smart lights around you blue uh because you just like that color or things like that then uh, those could be rendered in a way that was uh, um, sort of knowable to people. That means more interconnect, but I also think that there's really interesting things that come from that interconnection. Like, um, it, it, again, within the, the context of uh, augmented photography is like, I, I don't know if it's as popular in the United States, but because New Zealand is so far away from everything, on a number of signs for here's how far away and in what direction this thing is. We'll also have just signs to point to LA and London because it's funny that it's, you know, 12,000 kilometers away uh, kind of thing. So uh, yeah, like having uh, sort of anchoring um, pictures uh, related to, uh, you know, far flung uh, places and, and objects can be an interesting or a, uh, or a grounding thing for what people think about and what they value. Like if you've ever been to the Middle East, um, pretty much every room you're in has a little sign pointing into what direction the car is in, so you know where to where yeah. pay. So um, things that help enable the indication of those values or those uh, abilities uh, could be a, a useful thing to do or to help sort of render concretely what it is that somebody's been doing or what they've been thinking about. Uh, those are all options and, and things that can be rendered digitally. Yeah, I like this, um, this idea of the, yeah, because I think the the accessories were always the entry point for people's to to connect them with the the lab. So, Julian, I I want to understand more when you're saying the narrative or the the why. Um, can you can you speak more to that though, so that I'm understanding what your disconnect is? Yeah, so um, the in, in some sense, like the the why is the thing that it's like, oh, okay, man, that makes sense. I can totally see that as a given given my my you know the given my given given you know my my experiences and my my you know my knowledge of the world today and 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 and, and, and sort of the where I see a trend, you know, or I feel a trend of something from now into the future, like kind of design fiction sort of operates in that space where it's like, 
oh, you know, it almost feels like, okay, that's something that people do would, aren't they not doing that already or something, you know, like, so when we were doing that, right. like chat GPT, there's so much there because it's such a rich, fertile kind of zany, you know, space right now or vibe right now that, that if you say, um, if, if you said like, yeah, you know what, there's a, there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole, uh, there's a, there's a newspaper and it's just all done by, by an, by an algorithm. Like that makes perfectly good sense. And there's someone probably already has that. Maybe not commercially. Maybe it's an art student who's doing a project or or whatever. Like that feels like oh, okay. And then when it starts tipping into being too far, it's like you got to do a lot of work to imagine that world. And some of that work might be like, okay, I'm going to ignore that. That doesn't really feel feel like a like a like a thing. Like I'm, I'm I'm pushing into essentially the science fiction realm. I'm asking a lot to 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 feel something. And and it should be something where it's like. Or I'm saying for, you know, for the design fiction little magic moment, it should be the kind of thing where it's like either, you know, either reaction is like, that's oh, fucking great. We could totally make that. We could commercialize that. That is, that should be a business. Like, don't tell anyone. That's a good one. Or it's like, um, uh, yeah, like, wait, that seems, why isn't that happening already? You know, like that thing, you know, that thing of like going into that world and like, and, and it just feels plausible to such a high degree that, that it would be a hygienic thing that people do all the time. Um, then, then, then that's, that's the, that's the why that I'm, that I'm, I'm wondering about, and I'm curious to find, like, yeah. I don't, I, I think AR is like, uh, yes, you know, it seems like people are pushing it. It could go the way of the first generation of VR or the way VR seems to be going today. No offense, Brandel, um, where it's kind of like people are still looking for what's the, where's the there, you know, what, what, what's going on there. And um, that to, to the point that it actually makes sense for uh, a company like, like, like Apple or, you know, any, any, any large company to be like, yeah, let's take this on because operationally and um, from a business perspective, this makes really good sense. Because it's gonna, we're, this is gonna be happening at scale, as opposed to, you know, you know, like a MDP student or whatever, an RCA student doing it because they're just trying to experiment with what is not yet, you know, a mass market thing. So what am I trying to say? It's like, how? What are the ways in which you make it feel like this is just a hygienic part of the world that 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 operates all the time? By hygienic, I mean it's like. You don't even think twice of course yeah i mean duh of course cars have headlights and you, like yeah. the, the where it feels normal ordinary and every day and that's a hard trick that that's that's a really hard trick to pull off um which is why i think we need to uh you know kind of keep 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 pushing into it I'm, I'm still not you know just me personally i'm still like wondering about ar generally speaking i you know i've not yet seen the thing where it's like i would do this all the time as you know, I would I would do it as routinely as pulling out my you know my my iPhone, which I you know I do a ridiculous amount of time, even when I don't need to. It's, yeah, it's funny it's how like uh, there. the phone will be in my hand all the time, but I very rarely want to look through it at the world. Like if anything, I'm hiding the fact yeah. that I have the phone in my hand. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I was I was at this uh, I was at this event last night. Um, at, at brain dead and they were showing a movie or showing uh that that kevin bacon film quicksilver which is a terrible beautifully terrible film and you can only really watch it in a crowd of other cycling people because you laugh at all the cheesiness and like wait he totally shifted the gears the wrong way <laughs> you kind of it's just you know it's just it's just a gas and you know, after a while i'm there with chewy dog and and the and the the woman sitting next to me she pulls out her phone. She's doing phone stuff, you know, in the middle of the movie, like dims it down. And then I find myself doing the same thing. And, uh, and, and we're both trying to hide the fact that we're, that we're doing that. I don't know. I guess I'm just, the point you're saying, Aaron, just reminded me of that me last night where, you know, I should have been watching the movie, but I wasn't. Um, so, so the trick is, and this is, this is like, this is, this would be a masterful trick is to make it seem like, yeah, I mean, you actually you need AR to function in this world. Well, so, I mean, a couple things there. Um, has, has anybody played with Quest Pro or any of the decent pass-through AR headsets, like snap lenses or anything? 
Uh, yeah. And Brandon, was, just, in, just to say, I'm, I'm not trying to say that. that uh, no, 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 no. So, I, so I, I, I don't really like AR through a phone either. Um, I'm hopeful that um, headset AR will happen one day, mm -hmm. uh, that somebody will be able to make it a thing. Uh, and so, so then whatever you learn about it now will hopefully have a little bit more relevance. Um, but the, the second thing to your point is uh, that, um, you know, you, you use your phone to get information you need. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you want to check the weather, you go to the weather app. But if you, if there was a way to make it so that you actually needed to look through your phone, not, not at your phone, but through your phone, uh, in order to get that information, then that may change the sort of the value proposition. So if you, if your friend, if like you, you have a, a couple of different friends and one of them is your stocks friend and you get information about stocks by looking at them and then the stocks are on them and then somebody else is your weather in Tokyo friend, then, you know, you, you could, you could sort of spin it that way and look at things that way. So that rather than opening an app, you look at a person or in a direction and stuff like that. So. Um, I, I agree that that, that like you, you know we've we've talked to Kemp about utility, um, yeah. and having sort of a, a value to actions. Um, so I um, I think uh, yeah what you're what you're saying about what you're getting out of your phone in, in the theater, but how, it needing to be a far of action, yeah, like is is a really central I issue for AR when it's sort of constrained to these other domains. My my hope is just that. <laughs> You know, future systems, when, wherever they turn up, will uh, will have the ability to um, to to more seamlessly integrate these things, so that 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 friction, which is right now absolutely too much, is is less. Uh, the classic like metric right now is like as, if as soon as you're trying to multitask with your phone while you're having a conversation, your IQ drops like thirty points. So you know w what happens right. when it, when it is the, like what could we do with the IAR where it was actually increasing your capacity to process um you know I, I don't know maybe sort of just a standing question that i have here is just like if the most popular tour code today is the carhartt one like what is it about this tour code that might actually make it a reasonable competitor and i guess i just sort of wonder that generally speaking like are we thinking of this thing as like potentially the next ubiquitous tour code um, obviously there's a whole apparatus that would have to grow up around it in order to do it, but like, you know, do you want like near future lab X Carhartt, you know, or like how, how big is this going to be? How, and, and if it is going to be big, like what are the sort of industrial applications that it will be used in? Right. Like, you know, there will need to be a fire retardant version of it, right. Probably a high vis version of it, things like that. Um, you know, both both of those have some way of augmenting with the reality, in as much as you don't burn to death or you don't get you know hit by a car. Um, so yeah, just some meandering thoughts there. Yeah, I think the the thing that I'm getting, I think the thing that maybe the problem that I was having was thinking of it as I mean, it's not a problem making it accessible may have taken me down a different path, right? Like the AR filter was really more, was less about futuring and more about accessibility. So maybe Julian, that's, does that seem like the, does that seem like the friction point? Sorry, Not say friction, that, but- Say that again. So, cause what, uh, yeah, let me say that again. And I, I'll, I'll continue actually real quick. Um, because I'm I'm sort of vibing with what you said about AR, right? Like a, AR does not, I don't think of AR as futuristic at, at all, right? At this point, right? Like I, I think of it as very like it's here. Um, I was thinking of the AR filter as the access point for the accessories, but solely for the point of getting people to it merely just like the vehicle. Right, like mm -hmm. nothing about it was nothing about it was um, groundbreaking or futuristic or having anything to do with the near future. So that may be one friction point right there, mm -hmm. of of like where there could be some issue or where you're pointing out like, does this actually push our concept of the near future? And then two, Brendel, when you were talking about the headset, 
something I found really interesting yesterday in some research with just sort of like the, the focus on going back to headsets, not these like headsets that are like VR headsets, but people using headsets for like pickers, right? Like at Amazon warehouses and whatnot. Um, and I found that to be really fascinating. You know, we're not making glasses, but this idea of like, what is that thing where in 10 years, everybody will be having a pair of glasses like Warby Parker came in and was just like, here are glasses. And now everyone's doing, everyone was going to buy glasses that didn't need glasses, right? So one is the friction point that I'm trying to make this too accessible and the technology is just not interesting. Well, I think, I think that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, I get, I, I think I feel a question. I think that that is, that is part of the work that we're doing. So yeah. in, in the sense of like, well, you know, is it? And so that's why you have to keep testing it and, and, and find the thing. And, uh, and we should be, you know, fully prepared to be like, you know what, we just got to bend that. It, we never, it never felt, it's not feeling right it, or, you know, whatever, or that's it. it. Doesn't you got it. Right. You found it, you found it, you know, but you have to keep pushing before you can really make that declaration and so far we haven't we haven't really we haven't we've we have, you know we've said it and but we haven't we haven't pushed it like we didn't do the equivalent of you know you going downtown getting bolts of fabric cutting things out trying it out looking at it being like hmm, okay because we could have we could have totally done all that and been like yeah you know what i see it but we're not we should actually you know what we should do a short coat we should be doing a, a, a hoodie yeah. And and you have to be prepared for those moments where it just the whole thing just yeah just goes in a different direction, and that's that's the beautiful aspect of doing of doing the prototyping, and not holding too dearly to, you know, the assumptions that you started with, like, you know, uh, I don't I can't think of any you know, you, yeah that, that I think those things happen, those kinds of things happen, where totally. you start out doing a car and then at the end of it you know, like. We're, we actually it's it's a fast food business that we're getting into here or something i don't know um and i think the same thing it, the same thing is always possible with every aspect of the project and i think we 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 haven't yet seen what and where um and maybe even it's, it's the wrong thing to even even call it ar you know maybe if, if we started another direction where it's like accessory packs because I feel I feel like AR is you know it, it, it's 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 yeah. so heavily uh, front loaded. What do they say up there? Over indexed on on the technology implementation. Is that right? Did they yeah. use that phrase right? <laughs> the word augmented yeah, yeah. definitely has that sort of like. Not everybody wants to augment, you know. Yeah. So there's that, and then there's the whole, there's the reality thing, and then it's also like it's, it's if you if you Google that, you come up with a bunch of glasses. And, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's even, you know, is the augment, is the augmented part of it just that there's, that there's a, that there's a, there's a, there's a patch of Molly, uh, kind of weaving like that augments it. You can now add things to this M material things. I'm not saying like, you know, like things through a, through a, through a camera lens like that. We've all, this is our AR solution is the fact that there's a, there's a, there's an ecosystem, a platform an API and an ecosystem that just happens to be material, it happens to be physical stuff, whether that's Velcro or Molly or snaps, <laughs> snap, that'd be great. Fucking just like, it's, this is our snap kit, our Snapchat, our snap. What's it called? They're just called snap now. This is snap. It's called a snap. <laughs> God, like the slap bracelets, I can't accept any of that. Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I love, I love, and this is part of why I love entrepreneurship is just like the constant love hate relationship with my own ideation process. I mean, so I'm all for it. I do think though, that those moments of like, wait a minute, it's helpful. Cause I can, I get, I am so obsessed with these, these accessories. And I have this vision in my head of this, of these, of world building in the future with these future dumpster divers. Mm -hmm. And I, I know why it's the near future, and maybe I'm not great at articulating. Maybe I need to like sit down and figure out how to articulate that better. But I also want to make sure that when these, when you say I am seeing this like moment of tension that I use it as a point of reflection to be like, wait a minute, is there a gap that I'm not looking at? Mm -hmm. And I think that 
what that did for me was I, I truly am not interested in AR filters in the sense of like, I don't get excited about it. Like I'm, I'm not like turned on by AR filters. I am totally turned on by the idea of like these secret building worlds where people like can communicate with each other through um, layered identities that somehow exist in multiple realms somehow. And I don't know what that means necessarily, but like, I wanna get to that next, like what that means, if that makes any sense. You know, you, you mentioned the, the headsets for pickers and Amazon. I just, I wonder, and I, you know, the, I share that Mokapi thing. One thing I was wondering about is like, you know, repeat stress injuries and stuff like that. Like, what are the things that somebody who's wearing a chore code on a regular basis is doing? And like, could there be an AR where like, if you're like the shop floor manager, you're able to like, you know, hold up your camera and be like, ah, this person, you know, is reaching a, a stress, like, a, you know, a, a point where they should be like, doing less for a second because they're, you know, they've been, they've done this movement enough and, and they need to take a break or they need to, they need to sh shift. And, you know, I, I sort of hate to be ushering the AR thing into the space of like productivity and, you know, capitalist sort of frameworks. But I just, I wonder if there is sort of um, a way in which you could sort of be like, this is actually, this is the chore code that's going to sort of like help you work smarter and, and maybe work in a more relaxed way. Um, because it's going to help, you know, the people who are watching you work, you know, better understand what you're up to. I mean, and I don't know the extent to which that might just be better augmented by like cameras and machine learning and stuff like that, but maybe there's just like a relationship between the chore code and like the space in which you're working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think just getting hands dirty with like we did with the prototyping of the chore code each version of us, each version of that gets us to the next step. So if the if the first version of prototyping for the digital is through an AR filter, I'm fine with that. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm fine with that as long as we're not ragging on AR filters being like, we hate AR filters. If we're gonna do that, then I would just rather not go down AR filters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I've downloaded the, the Lens Studio and connected it up. I, I haven't done. I haven't used them. I think I said that I last last received received my last um, Snapchat like three hundred oh, weeks ago. I gotta. I gotta. I'm gonna have to leave. I'm sorry. I didn't know that was after ten. Um, but I'll I'll leave the call going. I just have to step okay. away. All right. Cool. Um. Yeah. So like. Uh, uh, so I, I, I'm going to go through the tutorial, uh, take a look at it. Um, one of the things that like, I, I, re I really believe with uh, AR is that um, it's got to reach into the digital usefully uh, in a way that, um, that gives you utility in terms of giving you information or reminding of things or something like that. So, so having interconnect to something other than just putting, like that said, you know, fashion is, um, Fashion is about reminding ourselves of, of, of and other people around us of just things that look and and reminding us in a sort of more oblique way of stuff rather than sort of transactional informational stuff. So um, seeing what what can be gleaned, what can be learned about people or places and things like that um, uh, could be a, 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 an interesting thing to do with it. So yeah, I'll I'll try. And if you you want to download um, Snap. Um, studio, um, you know, I'll make sure I, I get through it. And if you want to try it, or if you want me to step you through once I've done that, then um, I'm happy to, to line something up to, to, to think about it. But, it, you know, it really is supposed to be built in such a way as to, to allow people with um, limited experience to be able to use it. So, yeah. Yeah, I just downloaded. I'll, I'll report back. Yeah, you're saying you downloaded uh, Lens Studio? Uh -huh. Yep, I just downloaded that as well. So maybe we both play with that and then and then um, set up a time to, or whoever wants to download that and play with it and then we go from there. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Aaron. Just, just like totally off the wall idea here. Something that I'm thinking about is, um, you know, when you go to a city and there's people who offer tour guides, like they offer tour, like walking tours of a city. Um, 
I could see that potentially being like an application where like, okay, I am the expert of this neighborhood of San Francisco. And when I go on this tour, I wear my tour coat and like, there's actually a guided tour so that as you're walking as a tourist with me, you know, I like my body actually becomes sort of like the nexus point for all this other extra information. And so like, you know, you, you sort of use, use the frame of the, of the tour guide, like put, put the, keep the tour guide in the frame somehow. And it actually becomes a way for them to display information, um, yeah. you know, and gest gesture in various ways. So you could, you know, sort of start to map the AR both onto the body and also sort of the space that they're in. Yeah, it's, it's interesting as you're saying that, like, I agree with you. I'm not sure if you both said this. I know Aaron, you did. I agree with you. I don't like using my phone. Like I, the last time I was in, in New York, there was um, a gallery that was using AR filter, like a uh, augmented reality through my phone to like guide me through the gallery. Right. And I found myself just really frustrated with this like obsession with the phone as the window portal. Right. Like that, I, I just got really annoyed with that. Um, so I agree that there's this problem with the phone. Um, but I also don't want to overlook just the simple fact of like prototyping through what already exists. Like the technology, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking way too much in my head right now. Um, I don't want to invent technology to just prototype accessories, right? Right, well, and I, th I think that's sort of why I'm gesturing at like, you know, where is it already a conceit that the phone is, is an expected portal? You know, right. and then and then how does the chore coat potentially you know slot into that in a way that's really useful, um, right? As opposed to a new you know instance to pull out the phone. I mean, I think this is sometimes my issue with like futuring. It's like conceptually, yes, there's a lot of concept that can work, but like when you want to make a physical thing or a thing that gets consumed, even if it's through a platform you're talking about stuff that is existing and then we can push it from that existing stuff through our concept but i don't want to i don't want to get lost in big picture i don't want to sacrifice like getting it out there right now is that am i off on that Uh, no, I think I think that makes sense. I, yeah, I think from the like what Julian was saying about getting out and trying it is it useful. Um, and I'm not sure what he considers to be the sort of the criteria for success for uh, an NFL product, but you know, I think about the stuff that Anab Jane produces at Superflux or or some of the other things like the TBD catalog, uh, the, those other uh, artifacts. You know they they are um, they stop short of being mass market products. There there are provocations about what the world could be, and right. maybe you know what you you we all learn about AR filters essentially stops at the level of provocation rather than mass market. Um, but it also like but one that's valid, and two um, it paints a picture of the sort of necessary preconditions for success for something wider, such that you know if something else does change about the landscape of available sort of cap capabilities uh, or social mores or whatever else, uh, then yeah. it's, it's possible to kind of reevaluate on that basis once, you, once you've once you done that uh, groundwork. So, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at Mischiefs. Um, did anyone see their, their tune, their cartoon shoes that just came out? Oh, the, the, those, you posted those, the red. Those yeah, are, the boots. Those are really fun, yes. Yeah, and it was, it was just funny because I was just like, you know, it cracks me up. The, the, sometimes the why or sometimes the like getting it out there was just, I mean, I think that was, I have to do a little bit more reading into that or research into that. But, you know, that, that, um, all of that existed. Nothing about that collab or that product was sort of mind bending, right? But then, but then it sparked all this conversation about 
why we wear such a uh, uniform garment to begin with. Like, why don't we wear cartoon garment, right? Like why is, why isn't garment or shoe or all these other objects more inflated, right? Like, why don't we wear inflatables? Why don't we, you know, so it, it's, it does sort of push, it is having a lot of uh, effect on conversation right now. And so anyway, I guess maybe the provocation part is something that I can push a little bit more, but I do want to just get things prototyped. Um, yeah, I, I'm fascinated by sort of the interconnect aspect of uh, of these snap filters, whether because yeah. my understanding is that it is the web platform so that you have access to JavaScript and all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things that I'm excited about is, like I said, sort of drawing it, drawing in other abilities or 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 sources and stuff like that. So um, being able to know where you are in the world would mean that you'd be able to point to locations. But it also like, but simply by virtue of hitting certain URLs, you know, like I've made, uh, I've gotten a friend to make me something that is able to turn a motor to point in a direction, which means that if you want to have, um, you know, if you if you attach, say, a laser pointer to that, then it means that uh, the a laser pointer is able to point at you by virtue of going to this URL kind of thing. So, like that, those things are, are I think, um, weird but interesting. Uh, as as capabilities and and the the value of the digital is that it sort of opens up all of this, um, you know, high refresh rate inform, uh, information and and capability of all of this electronically mediated um, things that exist in the world, which is a lot these days. Yeah, I think there's something to that where you are in the world because I I see if part of what the chore coat and these accessories have been, a lot of it is about transportation, transporting to and from, right? Like what you're going into the near future with, both as your identity and what you're taking with you. Um, and maybe these, maybe these accessories act as these portals, right? Like if you're clicking on these, or if you're, if these accessories act as markers, they are transporting you into different, locations or worlds right like does that make how does that make any sense or does that already exist i think that i mean one of the one of the challenges with the integration of the physical and the digital right now is that people don't imagine the way in which the digital has the ability to impinge back on the physical very often. I sort mm -hmm. of think of it as a one-way one way directional sort of transfer. Um, and uh, like that's that's just incomplete. You know, smart homes are the first, first um, faint sort of gesture toward that, but there's a lot more that can happen and a lot more that should. So that's where I think that, you know, it's worth considering what kind of provocations are possible with that and possibly even you know encouraging those to to to, to sort of accelerate those and, and and really pull them out but it's it's where i think the the, the general context of digitalness being uh, embedded um is is weakest right now and so if you're looking for real stuff to do with it then that that's going to be a little bit harder to find <laughs> yeah i guess i keep sorry aaron Oh, just something I was thinking about um, was the possibility of, you know, having displays, you know, in what way could this like actually help you from keeping your, taking your phone out? You know, if you had, if you had the eyeglasses, right, what could you, what could you see on the tour coat that was useful? Like using the arm as a display, like Buzz Lightyear, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I got to drop off, but, but good to, good to chat and I'll, um, I'll. Yeah. I'll thank you, Aaron. Yeah, you bet. Um. Brenda, and tell me if I'm already like if this already exists because sometimes I can't tell if I'm if all this reading I'm doing is is taking me in circles or if I'm actually like thinking in a way that's like intelligently about this. But like when sure. we were talking about Memoji and we're talking that led me down this path of thinking about you know 
I, as my individual IRL self, right, have this existence. I have this digital existence. That's not new, right? I have my online existence. I have my real life existence. But then this concept of taking up physical space, like my digital self is very static and very flat, right? It is, it's, it's two dimensional through imagery. Um, even through a reel, it's all stop and start. There is no, it, there's no like interaction that one can have with me other than playing my reel. Um, the Memoji, while I understand that that is a face recognition thing, led me to think about this idea of like, as an digital existence separate from mine, but tandem to me, taking up space in another, I'm just gonna say realm for, for lack of a better phrase here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where my mind goes to with these accessories is thinking about this digital identity giving context to that digital identity, but also a portal into this world in which you are, um, I don't know, maybe I just lost it there. What do you, everything I just said, does that make sense so far or no? No, I don't think it does. I, I, one, of the, one of the things that bugs me about digital identity is that it's so um, buried across different places and things uh, so that um, you, know, you can discover somebody's identity by, by trawling through like the tech people. They, they use LinkedIn very, very heavily, I think. Other people do, but probably less so. Um, but then you know, the, uh, people have Instagrams, um, but they're not, they're not, they're not unified. They're not connected. And you wouldn't know, not that you necessarily, if you see somebody in the street, have the ability to kind of traverse the totality of their identity and understand all of the aspects about them. But I think that there's, there's some aspect of looking closer, getting to know somebody better that we, that we have the ability to do in a, in a tangible space where you can see the way that react you i don't know all, all of those kinds of bits and pieces mean that um being able to kind of collate what it is a person is who they are what they've done um has an interesting impact on the way that they exist in a in a space um right and so having a having a way to kind of merge those based on you know what they've been thinking about or what they've been working on like so a chore coat tells you what somebody's been doing in a, a tangible sense if you can see like a sawdust or 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 you know taylor's chalk or whatever on it these sort right. of exhaust the exhaust of their um their productive and intellectual and creative activities and there is no analog for what what happens with their their digital stuff you don't you don't have flecks of photoshop sprayed across your sleeves um but maybe that would tell us something you know it, so to the extent that there are there are activities that can be obliquely kind of understood uh, by people within a certain crowd then you can kind of wear that on your sleeve you can see what kinds of things they do what kinds of things they think about and 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 observe the marks that those actions activities make you know like we were talking about the the the, the high status patina of youth um those those are those sort of remain in the realm of provocation when you don't have the interconnect between the systems um but you know that's not not to say that that's impossible nor to say that it's um undesirable to sort of seek them so like if if you know like i don't know i i i kind of think that Photoshop users uh, would be happy to wear as a as a, a a badge, not necessarily as explicit as a badge. Like I have a thousand use, hours of Photoshop, but like, but at least um, uh, indicators, ways of of knowing that that somebody does those things, has done those things, um, has these things to show for it. Yeah, yeah. There's something really interesting because I. I don't think that, I think we see a lot of the gaming worlds of 
online identity being something that's so extreme, right? Like your indiv- your reality may be t-shirts and jeans, but your gaming world may be horns and wings, right? But then I think that as we're progressing, these links are, there's that connection between those two worlds is being filled in, right? So like your, you know, if, if Instagram is, if there's a spectrum and Instagram is closer to your, your, your reality world, your physical world, you know, we're going to fill in the pieces to get to that total fantasy world, I think. But in the process of doing that, I think you're going to, I think we're also going to realize just the, the digital identity doesn't negate the physical, but it also allows for there to be so much more individual growth. Like, I just feel like there's a, doesn't have to be so fantasy, but it also can be so in depth at the same time, right? Like I can have this entire digital existence that doesn't have to be rooted in pure fantasy, but can be so richly informative. Um, So that, I guess, that to me feels very, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because I think the chore yeah. code, I mean, it's based in work. It's based in exploring. Um, yeah. I'm going to be talking myself in circles here. Um, yeah, well, so th- there's there are a couple of different thi- things that I think about that. Like um, people playing video games is for many of them, especially games like say, uh, like World of Warcraft or whatever, uh, but League of Legends, I guess is a similar analog for today's, the youth of today. I mean, there are some people play well. Um, And they're they're at root, you know, that they are a power fantasy. They're about sort of being these immensely interesting and powerful uh, characters and, and, and having these abilities and stuff. But nevertheless, because they're persistent environments that people reside in within it's been relatively stable communities for often years at a time. Um, they they also still need to have sort of uh, marks of distinction between people who are merely um, weekenders or people who are who've come in very recently and are, are enjoying this power fantasy and people who have developed the kind of the capacity to um, to really discriminate between um, you know the the things that that are given to everybody and the things that are given to people who put in the work. So it's it's a funny it's a funny situation where like everybody's there for a power fantasy to to feel accomplished because you know truly being an adventurer, however sort yeah. of physically impossible magic may be, um, requires you know a Herculean um, a physical effort of of, of maintenance of, of certain sort of attributes, um, and yet you know and but but in, in in World of Warcraft those are table stakes that's just what you get for for clicking the join button. But then there are other things that that really do require what's understood within that universe to be work, uh, and uh, and the people who who stay in there know the different, um, and so like the the necessity to kind of develop uh, competence in interpreting the world manifests itself like inevitably, no matter how um, fantastical or or uh, how idealized um, the sort of the the first framing of that universe is yeah um and that's that's kind of a funny inevitability because it means that like even if even if an absolute newbie looks heroic um they'll cease to look heroic to people once they know the difference totally but i also really love that that whole awkwardness or that whole transition is so it's so human right like that Mm -hmm. is such a weird like no matter how far you how how technical you get or how far removed from technology you get, it is still repeating the behaviors of human at its core, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's like refreshingly uh, simple and complex all at once. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of so uh, a friend of mine. Um, 
who I was in New Zealand with, um, he finally got back this past Monday. And, uh, and he was uh, like, not alarmed, uh, very uh, struck by the fact that a, a woman sitting in front of him uh, was playing 2048 on her screen the entire time. You know, it's a, it's a 12 hour flight. And, wow. uh, uh, <laughs> but what was worse was that she was garbage at it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't get any better. Oh, I love and, that uh, the whole and, and 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 it struck me. It was just like, wow. Because the thing is, I don't know about you. Well, I, I suspect I do know about you. If you played twenty forty eight for twelve hours straight, you would probably improve. You would probably yeah. develop. And I, I, you know, I haven't played for twelve hours straight before, but I've played some for some time before. And you develop insights and and capacities uh, where that you can intellectualize about what it is that you do to improve. Um, but you also sort of reflexively develop these these abilities, and and what I was saying to our group chat about this is that that is learning, um, and we think of learning as an intellectual activity, as something that we do in school with books and classes and subjects and stuff like that. But actually, learning yeah. at base is is a very low level thing that we do with everything that ever happens to us uh, on any across any dimension in any domain. Um, and so it's it's kind of more of a of a, a rule of perception than it is anything that we can kind of render intellectually. We learn without language, we learn without vision, we learn anytime there's some kind of some kind of repeatable pattern and an expectation yeah. that that can be shifted with it. And in that same way, like in in World of Warcraft, you learn, and uh, in in an environment where there's information, where there's parameters that can be discriminated against them, and 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 kind of isolated. We learn, we know what they mean. And uh, one of the challenges I think with augmented reality, with a lot of video games and, uh, and other places where there's sort of detail presented for its own sake is that what we learn is that there's no there there. And so uh, having, having an environment where it has the ability to, to be connected to something that has meaning, that is able to drive these deeper pat patterns, I think is really critical for the sort of the, the conditions of success of any presentation. Yeah, it's so fascinating too because it's. I talk about this a lot. We talk about the that process of learning and mimicking, right? Like one of the things that Instagram has done so well is allowed people to mimic other people with more permission, right? So like you see people wearing tune boots, right? These cartoon boots, and you're like, oh well, it it for some people it gives them permission to say. I can wear these boots in Des Moines, Iowa, and somebody in New York City is wearing them. So I don't feel as wildly out of, you know, out of my mind wearing them somewhere else, right? Because you you feel a sense of connected to community, but you've also, you're mimicking another human that's already done it somewhere else. And so you feel some sort of group community camaraderie kind of thing. Um, but it's, it's these learned behaviors. It's, you know, with degendering fashion, right? Like, the number of times cisgender men will, I'll post something about how cisgender men can wear high-waisted pants. And then they'll go, somebody I know will go out and wear high-waisted pants. And they're like, oh, I, I bought these pants in the women's section. And I'm like, well, high-waisted pants were like a thing that almost only ex men wore back in the twenties and thirties, right? Like if you look at photos from that time period, they were exclusively worn. So it's like, it is so funny how the learning behavior I mean, I'm, I'm making that relevant in my world of fashion, but I'm very fascinated by this, like, this learning behavior, you know, you take these cues, you make them yours, and then you kind of iterate off of them. Um, it is really, it is, that would drive me crazy though, to watch somebody not get better. I would have, I would have a, I would have a hard time not. <laughs> Like the professor in me would have a hard time not being like, let's just take a beat and see what we, what we know already we've learned. But, you know, I also will say like, I've been shocked by the amount of people that just take those experiences to detach, right? Like that is their way of completely detaching from the world. I can't keep a game on my phone for more than a month because I will play it mindlessly for two or three weeks. And then I just get so angry that I'm doing it mindlessly, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't have that personality, but then again, I'm a, I will over.
overly complicate washing dishes. So it's not, yeah. Yeah, I, so yeah, my, my, my wife made the point that it was probably that the person was a nervous flyer and uh, was just yep. doing something to keep their hands busy, but it's just like, I, I still feel like even under those circumstances, I would expect learning effects to, to, uh, to apply. You know, that's one of the one of the sort of central tenets of people doing psych psychology studies is that learning happens no matter what. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, take an ambient. I would rather I would rather be knocked out than do the same thing over and over again for 12 hours. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep your your whole day here, but I I really am grateful for your ability to talk to me about this sort of ambiguous physical digital building of identity, because I think there's something that's where I see, you know, the, the chore coat started off as basic merch and then it very quickly turned into this being an identifier for people, right? Like how do you give 800 plus people access to building identity, right? Because this yeah. group is now just merged, it has morphed into a huge group. And even though maybe yeah. 10 people or 20 people are adding accessories, but you know, I'm thinking larger scale here, how do you give all these people access to building identity? And how do you make the future, the near future accessible to anybody or make it inviting? And then how do you build that community? You know, I definitely want to add an element of provocation to it. My goal has been more about adding accessibility. So maybe that is something that I, I can definitely, uh, you know, I can say we've done that. Maybe I need to add the provocation part more to it now. But I, I, I somehow feel like everybody adding their version of the future adds some provocation to it. Part of me, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm constantly in, as a professor and as somebody who's done a startup, like it's always been my stuff. So part of this was a little bit of hands off, letting people decide for themselves. Um, like does the provocation come from all these accessories creating a glimpse into what this group think of future is? I don't know. Maybe that's not that exciting, yeah. but I just I, I think that um, I've been really struck in the last I would say five or six years about understanding that fashion as well as being aesthetics or because of the way that it's aesthetics is also about making meaning and drawing reference, having hat tips and 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 considering sort of certain dimensions. And and I think that there's a phenomenal opportunity for the digital to be enmeshed in that process uh, in a way that allows that meaning to take more sort of concrete root and that there can be relationships that can be drawn on that can also then be traversed that that you can follow links to two things as a consequence yeah. of their sort of presentations and so like if there's there's something about a material or something about the way that somebody wore something once and because there's a lot of that in fashion there's like Jackie Onassis wore this here. And it's just like that everybody knows fashion knows that. And so then yep. that, that that becomes part of the meaningful lexicon of, of, of that article of clothing. Um, I don't know, I, I, I feel like that's a that's a really interesting thing to to riff on. Um, and and that, that's that is beside from the yeah, idea of being able to have accessories as tools, as as explicit sort of um, pathways into certain functionality or information and stuff like that. So yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, cool um, territory to cover. Yeah, I mean, it's part of it is so hype beast streetwear, like oh, you know, these drops of of accessories. That's in one brain, on like one brain track. It's like very um, mischief, right? Like it's very, you know, we do the disco ball sampling kit. We make that, and it's like that's an easy you know, design boom picks that up or, you know, whatever you can, you can sell that kind of stuff in my head. I can sell that in my head very easily, but um, as far as the provocation goes, I think there's something about the interconnectivity to it all 
that I'm not sure what the, if that is that provocation. I guess what I'm realizing is seeing all these accessories come back, I'm realizing this, this, you know, NFL creates a space that is, um, is not common, right? Like the fact that we're even having this conversation today, I feel very grateful for, right? Because I don't get to have spaces like this, right? I mean, outside of academics. Um, and I've just recently like left academics because I'm like, oh, I want to actually be in the world of making, you know? Hmm. Um, and so I guess, um, there's nothing I, I I never shy away at actually connecting or or interconnection of things or people because that is so wildly powerful, right? Like that's really hard to do. Um, I think people take that for granted. We think that that's easy because we have you know Instagram and millions of people, billions are just like connected, but that's not an easy thing to do. Um, anyway, I don't know. I need to think about this more, but cool. Yeah. So concretely, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with the snap uh live yeah. video and and see what i get out of it um try Same. to do that because it, it it says create your birthday lens uh welcome to all your tutorial and i say that it's about three minutes to be able to get a, a party hat on your head so that's probably Done. pretty easy uh and and i'll see um uh, but i also want to sort of get things in so that they can be say multiplayer or connected to wikipedia you know uh and i've, I've built some stuff in the past which would make that easier and i'll see where i get to and yeah if you do the same um there's a good chance you'll be able to get through it, uh, but if not, then I, I will be able to uh, troubleshoot and talk about the way that it Perfect. expects you to think. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll ping you then uh, later in the week, and we'll we'll uh, touch base and see if we can connect. Awesome. 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 Right. Thanks, Randall. See you again. See ya.
Do you know the show Scrubs? Or you wouldn't remember it. But have you ever heard of it? Sanford and Son? No. Oh, this feels like you. So this... I remember those photos. So good. They said black. I mean, I guess it's a kind of black. It's a faded black. Yeah. Like that means black. And it's mm. the same. Something happened with this batch. You think? Yeah. That's not black. You can like send it to them. And I'm like, look. Oh, no, that's gray. That's not black. Yeah. You need to send it back? I'm thinking about it. I mean, these are just for like my like, clothes type stuff. I mean, look at that. Something happened with this batch. Mm. It's not black. in the bag, Julian. Yeah. Like a laboratory bag. Mm -hmm. well, we're working on a chore coat. That was my call this a morning. A short you are. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe put it in a darker spot mm -hmm. on your chair where there's like shadow. Those guys finish. Yes, stop. Mm -hmm.